How many of you in this group have actually tried competitive sports in school even? No? One guy. Okay, one lady. So what did you girls uh, try? Athletics or something else? I tried dodgeball and went to the district level. District level, very good. And you? I used to play handball. Handball. Also at the district level or only at the school level? No, it was at the school. School level. Okay, good. Well, that's still that's interesting. But you look at how many of you there are here, and we only have a couple of girls. Well, you guys are boys, so that's why I didn't trouble you. I was looking particularly at female athletes because in many ways, and I don't mean to be sexist about it, Indian women athletes have actually done better than male athletes in international competition. Preeti Usha is a, is a Genuinely also true that we have a, a genuine uh, difficulty for our men to hold their own at the world. Since Milka Singh, we don't even have someone who's come that close. And, and I think it's important for us to realize that um, it may have to do with various factors. I'm not an expert, um, but I, I would say that uh, that our, uh, our women at least represent a certain amount of hope of, of, of global standards. Now, one of the questions I'm going to ask you, and I'm not trying to make it political, is do you feel that athletics gets enough support from the government? I mean, I ask this particularly because, you know, as a parliamentarian, we look at the budget and the government cut 231 crores from the sports budget this year. So an Olympic year that. So the question is, um, what do we do? Is the government doing enough for you and for, for athletics generally? What kind of support do you get from the after all, we taxpayers want to see metal, so our money should be spent for a good purpose. <laughs> so actually now, if it compare in our 1980s and now, it is improved a lot. Uh, in our time, nothing was there. I have seen the synthetic when I went to the school. Now, every state and every district synthetic work and infrastructure facilities wise, we are improving. But still, now we are comparable to Europe, we are nothing. Okay. Before, but everything is there, but except grassroots level. Grassroots level needed more support because uh, we neglect here in a row, row athletes. Row athletes, nobody gives sponsorship, nothing. But row athlete is very important. In, the, in school level, we should make them learn and running mechanism. If running mechanism is perfect, then after three to four years, you can go for specialization. In the specialization, then it's easy to improve the performance. Here, what, what is happening is in school level, a lot of competition, especially in our state, a lot of competition is there in every school. So, teachers will make them running, running, running like that, and they get filled within three years. Mm -hmm. And after three years, they'll burn out, but not systematically. They're not learning running mechanism first, first of all. No? So, after three to four years, they do good and they slowly they disappear. Mm -hmm. Some of the others will come to university level or maybe. Some may come in the national camp. Hmm. Those who are uh, is in the national camp, they are getting the facility. Like they are getting foreign coaches, foreign physiotherapists, foreign uh, nutritionists, foreign recovery experts, foreign masters, everything. When they come to the national camp, but by the time time is over, so they do training, and some of them get little bit result and then. It is happening here. So the raw level is very important. Though we have a scheme of Hello India, but Hello India also, some even you should be. But under 14 or 30, we need more support. Well, Hello India's budget has been cut from 890 crores to 658. And the National Sports Development Fund has been halved from 50 crores to 25. So, there's a bit of thing, and I don't know how many of you followed the news from uh, Tokyo when Nira Chopra won the gold medal in javelin throwing, that his coach, who is a, a German former champion who at home, expressed his frustration with poor planning and lack of support from the Indian authorities, the Sports Authority of India, the Athletics Federation of India. So clearly we have to do better, and that's why I'm pressing you on this. What can we do better? What should the Sports Federation, what should we expect from the Athletic Federation of India or the Sports Authority of India. What should they do to give 
our athletes a chance to excel on the world stage. Sir, this lower level is very important. When they come to senior level, they all have to participate in European competitions. That is more important. When you do training here in India and sit here and only practice in here, no use. The same thing for me also, no? The more exposure, that is my work. So, running with the champions from Europe and for that facility should be there. But even, I think, after me also, the same thing case for Tindu Luka. Tindu Luka is my student and she is also used to get every, every major week. World Cup, World Athletics, Olympics, it was her exposure. Before that, she needed European competition, no? That we don't send because of We that. not send, we should get the entry first and then we have to go. To get the entry support, we need the support from the, maybe, maybe, I don't know, sports authorities, no? Like, yeah. uh, right. we need the support for that. Right. Get entry and participation. But Neeraj, why, what happened? Neeraj, Neeraj was won the medal in World Junior. Right. So, he get competition otherwise also. Because they invite him to get uh, to do that. So right. that is the plus point for Neeraj. But here what is happening is we are after me competition and winning a race, people will pour money here. Before that, nobody is that's so nobody. true. That you get the help and you don't need it. But after you already achieved enough to get the help. Very, very good thing. One one now that we've changed something negative, let me say something positive. One thing I've heard is that uh, is that we have a very good reputation for exemplary behavior that our athletes are considered to be role models uh, considering that even in the olympic village a lot of the other athletes misbehave or get drunk go back people are more uh, trash the place or god knows what else that there's never been any complaints about indian athletes is that true is that fair are they are they trained to be well behaved normally sir sports people are more disciplined <laughs> those, <laughs> those who are disciplined they are 100 percent they will get the matter those who are not that discipline is needed for sports. Also. Okay, well, that's that's so popular. I think our, our uh, is that good. good. Well, in fact, young Neera Chopra, as you know, as you probably know, is a soldier. He's a subedar in the army. But uh, when he was asked about his Pakistani opponent who came fifth, uh, Arshad Nadim, he said it would have been good to have had Nadim on the podium too. Asia ka naam to ho jata. That was this decency and respect shown by an Indian soldier and athlete for somebody from a neighboring country who's considered in some people's eyes to be an enemy. That I think is an exemplary thing for all of us. And, um, and I would like to say that while Usha has, because of my question, she's been focusing on how we manufacture champions. The truth is that our athletes are also models of sportsmanship, tenacity, and pride in our but I don't want to let Usha go without taking some questions from all of you. So, the floor is yours. Just raise your hand and as I pick you, just stand up and ask whatever you'd like. But she is the one you're lucky to have a world beater, uh, our sort of really our golden athlete uh, from the time when your parents were your age. So you really now have a great chance. The floor is yours. Come on, hands up. Who's going to ask? Yes, go ahead. Sir, so, uh, like you discussed about in between becoming an athlete and, uh, you know, becoming successful. Yeah. Sir, so, but uh, usually what we uh, see in, you know, uh -huh. media and um, other platforms, sir, so, uh, there are many athletes who struggle to uh, for their, you know, uh, health treatment or even for, you know, for uh, running their livelihood. So uh, in that case, I wanted to ask, uh, according to you, uh, do you think that government is doing sufficient after the player, you know, after some years, the player wins a medal and brings glory to the country? Do they, are, are they actually valued or, you know, seeing that, you know, recently I heard uh, one of the national boxer uh, was doing a, a job at, as a parking, you know, parking lady. Parking attendant. Yeah. So in that case, is it, you know, is government's not present one in general? Is it justified that they are given the, that respect which they deserve? Good question, Usha. I mean, once an athlete's athletic years are over, once they're too old to participate in competitions and so on, does anyone look after them? What do they do? If, if a boxer has to be a parking attendant, which I've read and seen the photographs, there have also been stories of others in terrible condition. There's women selling uh, 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 
the national level at least selling you know for quarters or whatever on the side of the street but what what can we do or what is being done to support that needs after that day sir actually now lot of things is there when if they are the national champions lot of departments department is helping us here mm -hmm. improvement mm -hmm. in that i think in india especially athletics railways used to help more most of it take about the hockey now hockey most of the players from railways mm -hmm. so in that in, at least they should be in the national level but some of them may be good in state level or uh, maybe that type of people may be uh, didn't get any job otherwise also here sports culture is not there in our country for me mm. when i was 20 years i had come close to the medals mm. for me another four years is there to achieve the gold medal mm. those who finished eighth she won the gold next year mm. for me the same like people will remember everything with the, like everybody will remember only for six months this mm. then that tempo will go again you are the same for me it's they don't have six months not the same in 90 up to 88 not much the same thing no exposure nothing everything was same like me so sports culture is not there here people right. will forget everything very fast what you did was a very good question but so otherwise for me see I announced my retirement in 2000. For me, I think you have called me here for at least a year. So something is there that is important. So that is after doing this. You are an exception. <laughs> so my name is Chris Bhalla. So my name is Chris Bhalla. Chris? So Chris Bhalla. Okay. So, Krish, I mean, the thing is that if you look at the, uh, the the answer that Usha gave, part of the problem is a few people, the ones who reach the very top, they may get a support structure. Or those who are in a team sport, where you can be picked by a big institution that runs teams like this, like the railways. You know, in cricket, Mahendra Singh Dhoni started off as a railway ticket collector. So, those institutions, they get support. But the overall ecosystem in our country for sport the lack of sporting culture is something very important that we need to try and change. Thank you. Who else? Yes, Emily. So, so my question See, is, no one wanted to be the first. Now I've got seven hands up. <laughs> so my question is, uh, when we see... Tell us your name as well as you start asking. Uh, my name is Ashita. Yes, And um, my question is, when we see any form of international games, the player who uh, brings medal gets the glory. Right. But the player who just missed the medal by this third is made to go through a tremendous amount of pressure. So is it fair for them to uh, go through this because they have put such an amount of effort in coming to this position and then they have to go through this. So is it fair for them? Sure. Sir, actually now I think uh, uh, the schemes for the government, I think first three will be taking four goals. And participation is getting 25% and 25 lakhs, and maybe up to eight portion. Uh, I think uh, uh, more. Now they have announced it, but in our time it was not there. But now, with, uh, up to eight, uh, the price money they are providing, government is providing. Up to eight. So, and participation also, but not central government, state government, some of the state government. Yeah. Haryana is announced. Haryana is announced. Yeah, but uh, I think central government, I think up to eighth portion, maybe uh, up, not up to eighth portion, third price money is there, and uh, those who are finished eighth, then fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth is the same, some amount there. Provided. I think railways, I think railways, not central government, railways providing the. Uh, so it depends where the funding is. Right. So um, there's so many hands up. I'll come back to you once we run out of questions. Uh, the young lady at the back in the middle. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, we are all aware. What's your name? My name is Riddhi. Riddhi Thakur. Yes, sir. I'm from Nagpur. Yeah. So, we are all aware of the recent controversy over the caste and religion of Indian Olympic players being searched all over the internet and circulated over the internet. So, um, why do you think people associate the identity of a person with something as big as bringing laurels in the Olympics itself. And have you ever faced such indifferences or something like that ever in your life? You know, what happened was when 
uh, girls did well, the women's hockey team as well. People started searching the cast of the players in the uh, on the internet. <laughs> and the shop, yeah. So what is the cost cast and so on? You never had any sense of casteism in the and because I am not worried about that and I am not at all, my focus only on winning and sports. I don't know whether people say like that, but I have no worries for that. My focus fully on sports. It's, it's peculiar that there is a mentality of some people who do that. But obviously when you are looking at a sport, all that matters is your ability to win. It doesn't matter what your name is, your caste is, your religion is, your language is. Duty is their race. Duty is their performance. That's right. So that's the, I mean, I think, I think the people who are doing this are not sports people. These are unfortunately just prejudiced people in, in normal. Okay, there was a young man as well, I think. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, Starting from the back and moving forward, guys. Otherwise, it looks as if I'm only seeing near. Yeah. Yes, I'm Harish. Uh, Ma'am, so my question to you is, Ma'am, what do you think that the government should take in steps in forward to develop these sports so that we could get in more recognition in international level and we could get more medals. So what can the government do and what changes are required? Actually, first of all, uh, we should believe on our coaches. If they are lacking anything, we, we should get uh, uh, their uh, uh, training from outside and get them there. We are always depend on uh, foreign coaches. And, uh, yeah, we should learn, we should learn the, the, uh, um, everything is there here. Now, uh, especially if you take about athletics and all those things, everybody is believe on foreign coaches. See, 1998, uh, uh, I have one who had come the near the Olympic medal, uh, uh, close to the Olympic medal. And from 1998 onwards, the foreign coaches working here. But one Olympic medal, now only, after long, yeah, spending a lot of, lot of money. But the, uh, we are not believing ourselves. Our coaches, some of the coaches are doing good. If athletic coaches ask uh, some uh, support, very late, we provide very late. But foreign coaches ask physio or massage or anything, it, it will come fast. So first of all, we should change that. And then, sir, actually, uh, and then we all our country people, uh, they should, uh, they, it's, it's the, they, they should the things know. First of all, they, they wanted that we, we also want the medal like other countries. And they, we are not like that. We, when you ask your uh, children what you want to become, you want to become maybe IAS or IPS or doctor or something like that. Not somebody said that I want to become the same board. So, uh, Hussein board. so it, it should be like that. No? So, so that, uh, because if, we, if people want Olympic medal, then the option tomorrow, government is there. So that option will come to technology will try to make the improvement. If people the want it, the government will feel the need, feel that it's necessary, and they haven't yet had to feel that. Partially because all of us, if I were to raise my, ask you to raise your hand, who here wants to be a, a world-class sports person as their career ambition? Studying to do this and that. That's what you also have. We've only got about five minutes left, so I'm going to try and be brisk. Uh, I've already given you a chance, haven't I? The guy in glasses, yeah, tell us. Good, after, good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, myself, Akshat, I'm from Pune. So recently there was a controversy. Akshat. Akshat, Sharma. I'm from Pune. So recently there was a controversy regarding China that they have secretive dedicated sports camp. So why can't that was a controversy? Instead, why can't we have similar set of in India, why can't we have uh, indigenous investment to help develop people uh, or our own sports persons? So you saying in China there are these sports camps yes. where they take young people and train them to uh, be good at sports camps. Why do we use you think we should do something in sports camps? Maybe they are okay, but not, we should not make them to get the result first. If you feel they are good, but support them, sir. It should be in the academic. We are doing the same thing. Pro level, under 14 years students, they are 
uh, they are admitted in the, our hostel. When everything is free there, then we will coaching you to go expose everything there. Do you get any financial help from the government to run your uh, no, run my academy? No, no. support from the government. No, no, so, no, so, so how do you manage but, to finance? Hard. I used to try to get the sponsorships sir. Sponsorship. It's all because of willpower. I don't know how it is running. If some problem comes, but it will somebody will be there to me like that. It is going like that. But the government supported giving land Kerala government. And even they have to sell everything after sell. And after the center government has constructed the director. So her academy would be a good place for you to go actually. And you want to go that way? Yes, there was a hand here. Oh my gosh, three of you. I don't have time for everyone. We'll just take a chance. Do you have to? Oh, Thank you. Oh, my name is Kushti, and I'm from Abbas. So, my question was that, like, uh, in the, uh, when we are in early age, like the kids between 10 to 20, it's a good time to train them. You have never put it in the A little louder so they can hear uh, you on the so, back. Uh, it's a good time to train the kids between like 10 to 40. So, what? In our education policy and even in our schools, the more focus is on academics rather mm -hmm. than the schools. Right. And we barely have one or two periods of the schools in a week. And that too, it, it is not focused. The, uh, the teachers might take it for the academic focus for that particular mm -hmm. period. So what can be the reforms that we can make it uh, in the education policy so that uh, it, the sports is also seen as a good uh, Yes. Sir, it should be there, sir. In our uh, thing, Titan uh, Gear is posted weekly once uh, the disqualification comes. But I think every every week, I think it, it should be there. Every day. Every day. And every day, it should be there for. You think most schools have one period a week of physical yeah, education? Yeah. Uh, it should be every day. Uh, uh, and then, uh, small in Europe, a small uh, child, no? <laughs> they are uh, learning, the children are learning for walking and how to walk tall. And how to play with small, small things. And it should come in that one, uh, they should learn in the younger age. So that you know, by the time when they become a fifth, sixth, they look like a tall uh, body, built, athletic body. That is happening in Europe. Here, we don't We're have that. that. So, start early is, I think, part of the answer. And, and at the same time, that's, remember in her case, from the age of 13, she's practicing two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. Why are you going to full-time school? So this is also worth bearing in mind. I I'll come to you last, because I think we really have time for two more questions. So let me ask one of the young ladies. Yes, you go ahead. So Madam Dixon, the Indian government- Tell us your name. Borough from Hisar, Indiana. So the Indian government requested the, for the 2040, uh, 2048 Olympics. Yeah. So when do you think the uh, nation India will be ready to hold Olympics in 2048 both uh, it's particularly from sports, you know that will India be ready to hold such a big event? Do you think India can host <laughs> the Olympics? Uh, we have already uh, organized the Commonwealth Games in Delhi. Uh, in Delhi. And the Asian so, Games also. Asian Delhi. Games also we have done it. We can organize, but before that, I think we should get more medals first, and then uh, then it will be good. <laughs> That's a part there. Ariana might contribute a lot of the medals, so we get them to see that. Yes. <laughs> Last question. Sorry, Ariana. I think we, we don't end up, there's already a seven o'clock event, you're going to be a few minutes late for it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Janvi Chitris, I'm from Mumbai. My question is basically, we've seen when, uh, you know, some team loses, um, when we get a medal, we are very proud of the people who do that. But when somebody loses, um, the, as the audience, we're supposed to support them, right? But the things that we see, like, you know, there's vandalism in front of their faces, that, you know, there are so many threats. So, is it like a fear while, you know, because so many expectations are there when you are on an international level? How does it feel just to be there? And, you know, so many people have so many hopes to do at, mm. at the international level. Usha, that's a very good question, a painful one, because uh, the reaction of our public to defeat is very unsporting and very nasty. We saw what happened to these poor women in the hockey team when they didn't win that bronze medal. Uh, there were attacks on the house of one of the players. There were attacks on her cast that uh, she lost when she was done it, all of this kind of nonsense. So people have a certain negative mentality. How does the pressure affect all of you athletes? And, and what do you think is the way we can educate our public to appreciate the sacrifices you all make to try this? To try to bring glory for the country. That's all unfortunate, sir. See, when you become champion, they'll become making you know, like top 
when one mistake and one loss we take them down quickly it is the same thing are for me also in 1984 i was in the top when it comes 1988 injury and other don't understand anything or people has done anything for me but still for me i had an injury this old the injury is the part and parcel of you know any sport any sport so in, because of injury i could not do people had me say take them low i went on depression and it it to uh, uh, but for me uh, i went to the doctor in uh, homeopathy he he made me all right first depression and then my death but after what my mind was so strong i wanted to change uh, again then i have come showed the comeback in 1989 asian championship and won four gold medals with the record but you should make the mind like that people are like that what to do or one one competition if you if you are doing good and then you think that uh, you are so big uh, then you will get more pressure one competition you feel in next competition if you are not winning nothing is going to happen if you feel like that. no pressure on you thank you shay you've been given very <laughs> honest and forthright answers very appreciated we are blessed to have somebody with the extraordinary <laughs> I think we can leave the stage since there's a seven o'clock event to follow. But uh, thank you all very much. For that. Let me make sure that we do the right thing. Take a picture of this lovely audience, and then one of ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we two more minutes for you, please. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I would like to request uh, Anjali Raipat and uh, Abhishek Dhawan. come up and extend a small token of appreciation on behalf of higher event to this is being pushed by the conversation Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's have a picture with everyone. Come kids. No, no, we'll just let them stay where they are. We'll we'll join them in a few minutes.
All right, you guys. So next up, we have another very special individual who's been an advisor. Who's been an advisor and mentor to Rishabh and his team since the inception of the organization. The man responsible for bringing contemporary jazz and Western forms of dance to India. The first name that would come to your mind when you think of dance in India would be his. I'm sure you all have guessed it already, right? But I'll still give you a few more clues. The director of choreography for the Commonwealth Games, Melbourne and Commonwealth Games, Delhi. In 2011, he choreographed the dance sequences for 